Hello and welcome. It's the chat. I am Nani. Since the inception of the National Youth Service Corps program, the NYSE, in 1973 uh, by General Gowan, there have been 18 directors general of the NYSC. I am face to face with number 18 of the director generals. Shuaibu Ibrahim, a Nigerian army brigadier general, a custodian of military history, an instructor and director general of the National Youth Service Corps Shuaibu Ibrahim was born on the 13th of July 1967 in Nasarawa State, Nigeria. General Ibrahim graduated from the University of Jos, where he earned a Bachelor of Arts and Master's degree in History. Owing to the nature of his profession, Shuaibu has, through many postings, served in various capacities across the country. In 1994, after attending Nigeria Army Education Corps, he was posted as the military assistant to the then Director General of the NYSC. His insatiable thirst for knowledge led him to Tai Sholarin University of Education, Ijebu Deogun State, where he bagged a PGDE. In 2007, he bagged a PhD in history from the University of Abuja. In 2004, he was posted to Nigeria Defense Academy and later to the National Defense College, where he taught military history till 2009. And for his contribution to the Army's body of knowledge, he won the Forces Services Star in 2007 and was also decorated with the Distinguished Services Star in 2018. In 2013, he was posted to the Institute of Army Education as a research officer, where he researched and produced briefs and journals for the Army. And in 2014, Shuaibu was drafted as the commandant at Command Secondary School, Suleja, Niger State. In 2018, he was posted to the Nigeria Defense Academy's History and War Studies Department, where he worked as the head. And in 2018, he was posted to the Nigerian Army University in Bu, Borno State, as the pioneer registrar. While he was yet settling in Borno, Brigadier General Shuaibu was on May 10, 2019, appointed as the 18th Director General of the National Youth Service Corps in YSC, where he serves till date. Shuaibu Ibrahim is married with children. Brigadier General Ibrahim, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure. Welcome to the Yakub Gawan House. I am you know, happy to see you on this seat because left to somebody, you probably would not have been the next director general of the NYSC. Mm -hmm. A senator, you know, he, he was contesting that the appointment of the NYSC is not that of the military, but that of the president. Mm -hmm. How did you resolve this matter? No, I think it was just uh, just some misinformation. Uh, he was clearly misinformed. Uh, I think there's a communication gap somewhere. The appointment was done by Mr. President. Uh, the procedure for appointment of a general, whenever the tenure of the incumbent uh, is about to wind up, which happened to the one that uh, my immediate predecessor, it's a three-year appointment, and his uh, appointment uh, elapsed. And uh, the, Mr. the Mr. President would direct the Chief of Army Staff through the Minister of Defense to recommend accordingly, and then the President will now approve. And that was what happened. It was Mr. President that did approve her and not the Chief of Army Staff. Okay, yes. excellent. Mm. So congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, you are in the office now, fully seated. Yes. How do you find the seat? Uh, it's quite interesting. Hot? Uh, not, not quite. Uh, not very hot? It's interesting, that's what I would say, because it's a privilege that uh, I'm here for the second time. And uh, I want to use the opportunity to thank Mr. President. Why do you say you're here for the second time? What I was here mean? as a military assistant, as a young officer. Okay. I was a, a military assistant with Director General then, uh, Major General S.M. Dule. And I was here for three years. I left as a young captain. Uh, what have you found, you know, since you took over the office? No, I thank my immediate predecessor. He contributed uh, his own quota towards the development of the scheme. And uh, I picked up from where he stopped. He also did very well. And uh, I, I came in, I looked inward, think out of the box, and see what I can contribute to the scheme. And this is what I'm doing. 
in terms of quality of our graduates, I want to ensure that uh, only those that are qualified are mobilized. And uh, you know, we have our integrated system. And of course, we cannot depend on the technology 100% in that maybe some aspect of the failure. So what we re I realize that there's a need for us to conduct physical verification of our foreign trained uh, graduates to really be sure that they are qualified because we have some challenges here and there. And the, uh, what we found was uh, quite alarming. And, uh, Tell me what you found. Yes, we found people who are not qualified, especially from most uh, these West African universities. They will be able to go and face, spend some few months and then come back with degrees. And uh, we, we say we're not going to accept it. Really? So yeah. how, how do you get to verify this? We, through, we, what we did, we have a mechanism of finding out. And for that mechanism, we're able to unravel, unravel this. Yes. How many years have you put in the military I've put in close to 25 years in the 25 army. years. Yes. Your mm -hmm. career in the military, you know, whose idea was it? Your parents or yourself? And just as I said, I said I grew up in the barracks. All my life So your barracks. father was in the military? Yes, in the military. So, so you took over from your father? I took over from there. And uh, at the military, you know, it's, uh, just as uh, Mr. President was liking the NYC to the military, the military is the one of the agents that unite the country together. My exposure is likened to my life in the barracks and so on. Because you know in the barracks, you see our friends are caught across the country. And even our schools, I attend our children's school, uh, all our mates are people from all the parts of the country. And come to think of it, you also served in the National Youth Service Corps. Yes, in 1989. In 1989? Yes. What was it like in 1989 compared to, you know, what you have today? I refer to the present crop of core members as digital core members. <laughs> Where we served, there were no, you know, internet, no mobile phones and so on. I served in one of the remotest areas in the Denver North State, uh, Askerauba. About the safety of the NYC, it is, it, you know, there have been a number of deaths, mm. you know, resulting from all sorts of incidents, yes. you know, and um, it's discouraging some people from, you know, going into the program. Mm. Have you ever looked at regurgitating the, the program? Uh, some people have the opinion that perhaps uh, uh, the National Youth Service Scheme should start immediately after secondary education. Mm. What do you think? Well, that is a that is the opinion. But you know, our graduate uh, core members, just as the NHM always always say, say that the most knowledgeable and uh, readily always available when given a task to do. Uh, because uh, you see, when you deploy core members to they say the, our schools, other areas of needs, at this level, their level of thinking and so on they do we do better. We have quality graduates amongst our core members. We have quality graduates. So those ones that are not qualified, those ones, I'm, these are the ones I'm fighting. Uh, just as I mentioned earlier, you can imagine a graduate that cannot write his name or her name correctly. You know then that's a problem. And what NYC can do, we are not a regulatory body, but the NYC Act empowers us not to mobilize any of them that is not qualified. If you make yourself available and you're not qualified, you will be prosecuted and you go to jail. And for us to promote, to ensure that we have quality graduates in the country, what NYC can do is to ensure that we tighten our process of mobilization and ensure that only those that are truly really qualified that are mobilized. And this we are determined to do because I have a zero tolerance to mobilizing anyone that is not qualified to be, to be, to be in service. But this compulsory service mm -hmm. is such that if I graduated from university 10 years ago mm. and I want to come back to Nigeria and say to work, mm. uh, I could have been a grandfather at that, at that age. Mm. Am I supposed to or qualified to be in the youth service? No. You know, this is one of the things I also want to ensure we correct. We are not supposed to mobilize Papa core members. I refer to it as Papa core members. It's National Youth Service Corps. Yes. When youth is there, youth, it's not National Service Corps. When you say it is National Service Corps, anybody can serve at whatever age. If you school overseas, what the law says is that once you graduate, immediately you make yourself available for service. If you are above 30, then NYC will issue you exemption certificate. And that's what I'm saying. NYC will issue exemption certificate. If you stay overseas without serving, and then you come back after 30 years, you want to serve. Anyone else will not mobilize because by then you're already over age. 
And then for Nigeria, those who school in Nigeria, you know that once you get your final year, automatically you are mobilized. It is also applicable to those who graduate outside. But because we don't have control over graduates who school overseas, Nigerian school overseas. So the moment you graduate, you will come and Are you yourself. making any efforts to have some level of control, you know, over those who school overseas? That is, keep a record of them. And that's what so we are doing. We keep, we have records. The moment you graduate, you will come. If we are in doubt with your school, we clarify for the Federal Ministry of Education. Federal Ministry of Education have, we gave us list of recognized and accredited universities worldwide. So the moment you come, you make yourself available that you have graduated from social university, from a social country, will not take a look at it. If, you have, if the school is accredited by the Federal Ministry of Education and the NUC, will not mobilize you as such. And that's what you do. But the moment you come and the school is not accredited, will not mobilize you. You will always write to the Ministry of Education for clarification. Because you know this uh, NYC law cannot do it. And that's why I say it will require all our stakeholders to to really collaborate together. When you, when you okay. say your stakeholders, who are they apart from we the have the, Education? Uh, 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 we have the Federal Ministry of Education. Under the Federal Ministry of Education, we have the NUC, we have the National Board for Technical Education, we have JAM, and so on. Then for foreign, uh, f uh, for the Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs will have to come on board, on board with us, because the embassies can also help us certify. Like uh, uh, the Cameroonian embassy always write us, with uh, even four titties of those who graduated from there, that these are genuine. I will take a look at it critically and then we'll mobilize them as such. You, you came back recently from a tour. Yes. I uh, you know that um, one of them had to do with a, a youth court member who was killed. Mm -hmm. or who was, uh, I don't know what it was, but uh, you had to go there and condole with the parents, yes. or console with the parents. Mm -hmm. and, uh, this happens regularly, mm -hmm. and as I try to say, it, it, it's discouraging a lot of people from carrying out this. What kind of measures are you putting in place mm -hmm. to protect, you know, the the, the, the average core member? Mm -hmm. Just as I said earlier, most deaths recorded during the service here were on account of road traffic accident, and of course, if you have been monitoring my my movement and so on in the press, you will realize that in any forum. I do tell our core members, I warn them on one, on night journeys, two, on unauthorized journeys. Before you embark on any journey or any trip at all, you must take permission from the state coordinator for journeys within the country. And you have to apply through from your core employer to the local government inspector to the state coordinator. Your employer cannot give you permission to travel. But your employer cannot give you permission so to travel. Can give you permission? It is the state coordinator that can approve. And the moment you approve, and this procedure, the state on it turns it down. You are supposed to stay put. If you want to travel outside the country, you apply from your co employer through your local government inspector to the state on it, and then to Abuja. And it is only the director general that can approve your overseas travel. travel. And if you travel outside the country without permission, you'll be sanctioned. And some of the are coming by, you know, they're adventurers. Some of them are adventurers. And they travel without permission. Only for us to hear something has happened. What gives you the most headache in the NYSC? Uh, the, the, we don't have any. Just uh, it's like you we, don't have any. we continue to carry out vocation. Seriously, you don't have any. We continue to carry out vocation for amongst our core members and also our parents. Because some of these who who are not qualified, who made themselves available to the parents, also aid and abate it. You cannot imagine some a child uh, was withdrawn from one of the universities in Nigeria. And the parents keep giving him money. In the name, he was still attending university in Nigeria. So when it was time for service, we were expecting his parents to see him in uniform as a core member. But because the parents didn't monitor, the boy went and obtained a vacation from one of these Western Western universities, and we found him in the camp. How easy is it to obtain I would, a would, I don't know. They, they, they get it. You see now, genuine certificates in their hands. They buy with the money. With the connivance. So how easy is it to obtain that? So the, well, I don't know how to get it. All we know is that by the time you come and it is fake, how you get a battery we don't know. But they say they buy. But Generally in one year, how many core members do you, you know? We mobilize as many as 350,000 core members. 350,000. In core different members. sectors of the economy? Yes, different sectors of the economy. Okay, pick a question. Mm -hmm. 
Not too far away. There you go. No, it's just. So how does the three weeks in camp for Nigerian graduates make them better people? Good. That's, yes. Yes. That as your answer? Yes. That's the orientation exercise. It makes them better people because in camp, whenever I address my core members, I ask them, how many of you have been to this part of the country? You hear a thunderous applause. None. These are first time coming to whatever wherever I posted them to. What about those who avoid those three weeks of orientation? What's Sanctions. No, no, you must. It's compulsory. Orientation is compulsory, except for those who have uh, people, especially for the married married women. So that they come in with babies and so on. And we don't want to expose them to the harsh. Uh, if not, almost ninety eight percent of the coming will participate, because through that process, interaction, integration, the removal of stereotypes, promoted by some Nigerians. This thing get worked so, out. But what, what, what is the main benefit of that orientation? The essence of orientation is one, uh, physical training by soldiers. It promotes discipline, discipline and cohesion and integration. I too used to tell them, once we are asked to turn left, they all turn left simultaneously. All, what the essence is that we are saying that as Nigerians, we should be one family. We should do things together. And that is the essence. And I ask them, in, your, in, your, in their various rooms, your next bed mate may be from Cross River and you are from Sokoto. In the process, interaction takes place. And that is why the, 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 the dream. Well, the question the is there are people fathers. who are posted you know, to places in the Northeast and they would not go because of, you know, the. the, the, the if, you are posted, that if you are posted in the Northeast, if you are posted in Northeast and say you wouldn't go there, you're not a patriotic Nigerian. Really? Yes. If there are NGOs from other parts of the world, Helping Nigerians in the Northeast, and you're a Nigerian, you say you don't want to go. It makes you not be patriotic. But I can assure you, you'll be surprised when you get to the Northeast. You see Nigerians from other parts of the country that are there. What about those who have lost their lives? It's, okay, that is patriotism. You know, as well. it's patriotism. Yeah. If you look at the oath you took, you were once a core member. You look at the oath, they say if they need be, you can pay the supreme sacrifice. You can pay the supreme sacrifice for your country. The army is fighting there. They're also Nigerians. And the NYC is also part of national defense policy. In terms of crisis, these are the people who are the most educated, that can be trained quickly. You can imagine a core member within three weeks, he trained in camp, and he behaves like a soldier. You see a female soldier as commander in the parade ground. A female, I've gone and I see a female core member is a commander of the parade. You see a female soldier, a big lad, playing band. You see him blowing big old. They are trained, just within three weeks they are trained and they master it. In which category can you get such people and they can master things quickly? Is the youth. Because their knowledge, their intellect, and their exposure. And I say they are digital core members. Because so, so those who are calling for a names to the NYSC program are talking nonsense? Ah, no, they don't seem to understand the working of the scheme. And that is why I'm coming on board. And I, I ask whether there has been any comprehensive documentation of the NYSC. We don't have. So that's why we have taxed have tax the management. We are coming out with a book on NYC and national development, where we are going to document our activities comprehensively. Really? This, yes, we are going to show that Nigerians will see. I, I told you I went to, just came from one in Kano where we had a problem. Uh, and the community were begging me that, please, the problem is over. I should please bring back our core members. That without the core members, the <laughs> education and health and also cannot thrive in that community. And I say, yes, we're looking into it, our core members will return. What measures do you take for those who impersonate, you know, the youth core members? Mm. What do you do? Well, the person will be arrested. Who does the arrest? The police. Okay, police. so you work... Even you as a Nigerian, you have the right, a right to arrest anybody. You have the right. So if you see somebody in a uniform that is not uh, is not supposed to wear, are you ask ask me what are you oh, a common? But those are criminals, aren't they? Yes, yeah. Okay. So yes. but how do they get access to this? And I don't know. That is why we say we are trying to review some of this uh, the policy as just as I mentioned earlier. So a common member suggested to me, say sir, you are you've been fighting on this issue of uh, impersonation of common members with people wearing a uniform, taking them to the farm and big and, uh, and so on. So farmers using our uniforms. And uh, comedians, uh, all these uh, people use a uniform for films and so on without permission. So we were thinking 
based on the suggestion, we are going to sit and the management to look at it. The whether at the end of the service, the order we can recover the uniform back, or we are going to sensitize our, our core members so that some of these things are something you can keep for posterity. So that I can show your children and grandchildren. I was once a core member, so that you serve a source of inspiration also to their children that one day I want to be like daddy and mommy, so that I can also put on this uniform. So I then we will now come out with a resolution to that. Is any of your children saying the same thing as one day I'll be like that? Yes, my two of them have served. One is even an officer now. Really? Yes. It's in the Armour Corps. It's really? Yes, he's fight, he's fighting, uh, he's fighting for our country. He's in the North East. The military seems a little bit quiet, you know, on the Western Front. When I mean Western Front, I mean, I know, you know, stories. That, is it that they have become so unambitious? They, they don't, you know, there are no stories or reports of a coup or anything in, in Nigeria these days. For well over 20 years, we've not had any report of a coup mm -hmm. or government takeover from the military. Why has that been, you know, like that? Yeah, well, I think this was already going out of my scope. But uh, as the DJ knows, I'm more concerned with NYC issues. Well, however, I can assure you that the military now were, were educated. If you go to this, you see several PhD holders uh, within the army. Some of us have also been assessed for associate professor in the army, and uh, the army is uh, more our training. It's, uh, it's more focused. More on focused your... on submission of the military to constitutional authorities. And not into politics. No, no, we are apolitical. So you, you you couldn't have been in in politics when you leave the military. Is that what you're saying? No, no. If you retire, uh, the Mr. President. Uh, was uh, a general, and uh, and he's doing a wonderful Did job. Did you ever meet the president in your time? I've yeah. met him twice, even as On what occasion? Yes, so, um, the my state hosted me, uh, the my state governor, uh, and uh, his uh, cabinet. They they took me and the IG to Mr. President to thank him for appointing us okay. as indigenous of a national state. It's time to cast you away on an island, mm -hmm. and you're about to go on this mm -hmm. journey with only five items which are very important to you. Mm -hmm. No woman, nothing like human being, mm -hmm. but items mm -hmm. you take along with you. What are these five items you take with you? Yeah, I think that will make me survive. Water, at least I take water, food. Uh, what kind of food? Uh, maybe, what do you enjoy eating most? Uh, well, I like eating. Uh, this one who will be cooking for me. If I'll be on the island without nothing, I have to take some little, little snacks that can make me survive. And water. And if, if possible, if I also get soft drinks to go along with me. And uh, some paper that I can be writing and be putting my experience down. So that, uh, is, you know, it's also part of education. So that I'll put down my That's experience so that like others can. A diary. Can, or a diary so yeah. that people can read. And uh, when you also, it's, uh, when it's your turn also to go on such a journey, you will learn from my experience. As a historian, that's what, I'm a historian, so you'll be able to learn from my experience. But, when uh, when you talk about who cooks, who's going to cook for you? Mm. Who cooks for you at home? Uh, my wife cooks for me. She's a good cook? Yes. She's a good cook? Yes, she is. How do you know? Uh, I eat it half food. <laughs> 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 so what's your favorite meal that she prepares for you? I like uh, two shinkafa and uh, vegetable soup. Oh, when she does that, what do you say to her? What, what's your pet name for her? I know I call her uh, darling, but I call her Nari. People know me and my wife. We are extremely close, extremely close. What What do you like most? I just went to uh, I went to her school where she finished from, Saint Louis College. And what that's did that? Yes. And what did oh, that write there? a very good school. What did that write there? I said I came uh to thank the commander the principal and the school for having made my wife a good a wife and a good mother i when they read it they were surprised how many children do you have three three of them mm, two Are girls you still and a boy in the works no no how would you describe yourself in five words well i'm uh, humble and uh, i cherish my integrity and i cherish doing things the right way and uh, i love helping people so uh, I'm very humane, I know the word, I'm very humane.
and the welfare of people is very paramount to me. I can sacrifice for others. It's General great. Ibrahim, thank you so much for it's, being it's on the It's a pleasure. Program. Thank you very much. And, uh, I'm most grateful. Go on with one Nigeria. That will win. <laughs> and it will continue to be. That's General Ibrahim, the Director General of the NYSC, the National Youth Service Corps. And uh, I am Manny. The program has been The Chat. See you next time. The Chat is produced by Channels Television. You can watch it again online. Just visit our social media platforms, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Thank you.